So hello, thank you. <coughs> I'm Francisco, I come from Chalmers and the University of Gothenburg, and I'm here as a part of the Software Center uh, research project along with Christian, Azim, and Ula, and we're very happy uh, for the invitation from Testoma so that we can share our results. So diversity best test prioritization, sorry, I had to run <laughs> a little bit there. What's it about? So I'll begin with an example. Let's imagine that we have a software that we want to test. And this software is a simple software that does image recognition of different dogs, okay? So basically, you would have this app on your phone that you can download, and then you can point your picture, your camera, to an animal or something, and then that app would be able to tell you if what you're pointing at is a dog or not, right? So how do we test this software? How can we find the defects in this app? Well, if we think about it, the input is the picture of a dog, right? So I've asked two engineers to create a small set of test cases to test this app. So engineer number one chose these four test cases here, pictures of dogs. Cute, right? So engineer number two chose these ones instead. And now we have two different test suites. And let's say that we cannot run all of them. We have to pick one. Which one would you choose? So I'd like to ask you, if you want to find faults or defects in this app, who do you guys think did a better job in choosing test cases? So by a raise of hand, <laughs> who here thinks that test suite one, A, basically engineer number one, did a better job? OK. Who here thinks that? Engineer number two did a better job. Oh, interesting. Look around, keep your hands up. Look a little bit around so everyone can see our shared opinions. But I think that more importantly than answering who did a better job, I think it's very interesting that we understand why do most of us, if not all of us, think that test with B is better. We should ask ourselves that for a moment. And well, what we can usually th think and, and face and, and discover in these situations is that we humans, we have this algorithm in our head that if we need to choose something, if we don't have that much information and we need to choose, for instance, test cases, we, change to we tend to choose very different options. We, change to go, we tend to go with a diversity of things in the hope that by executing different things, we can cover all of the different parts of the system under test. And then you can ask yourself, Francisco, is that so? Really, can I believe this assumption? Well, research shows that yes, you can. There's a lot of research that's been going on there. I couldn't list all the papers, so I put in a QR code that you scan, can scan later. And there is a lot of investigation from several researchers, myself included, that we investigate these techniques. And we can say that they are te these techniques are pretty good, and you can automate them. You can do this automatically. So. We've been trying out these techniques, different, uh, these different techniques of identifying diversity in industry, and it's been very, very promising, specifically because we noticed that these approaches, they come from information theory, most of them, they are very generic. They tend to look at the content of information in a very general level. That is to say that regardless, if you're interested in a diversity of dogs, in a diversity of Java methods, or in a diversity of API calls, these techniques are capable of capturing these differences and can give you a very nice subset of test cases. And that is a very interesting fact due to that independence. So the techniques don't depend on the specific programming frameworks or technologies or domain. They can be applied and can be tailored in different companies and in different testing levels. And we've been looking at that. So, Specifically, we've been focusing on using these approaches on continuous integration and delivery pipelines. So basically, now that we run things and we test things continuously, we have much more tests and we do them more often, which implies that our execution runs tend to be very long. And not only that, we need to be strategic on the money and the budget that we allocate. How can we occupy different pieces of hardware to run the tests? And as a consequence that we can no longer, it's not becoming feasible to run all of the tests on everything that you have now, your effectiveness of the test tends to decrease. 
as more test cases you get. That is, unless you are using some type of test optimization technique. So for our industry partners at Software Center, diversity-based test prioritization has been allowing them to, has been enabling them to achieve much more effective testing by optimizing their test runs. So for instance, by running this technique in one of our partner companies, we're able to reduce by half, more than half actually, the time required to get feedback from the tests, okay? And then you may think to yourself, okay, Francisco, if I don't run everything, is it risky that some of the things will slip by? Yes, that is always the risk if you prioritize your tests and you can't execute everything. But if you're running tests continuously, if you run all of tests overnight or over the weekend, eventually you will find these faults and not far enough that they tend to be very, very, very critical. And most of the cases, so for instance, 75% of the faults we covered just by executing one-tenth or 20% or of the tests, actually. So then we can give developers fast feedback and they don't need to wait that long. More importantly, just by bringing in this discussion of diversity into teams, we've seen a lot of benefit. They start to question themselves, do we have diverse test cases? How do we understand priority when we execute? And so we're also analyzing these human aspects on how people test and they make test-related decisions. So the three takeaway points that I would like to give to you is, first, prioritize the execution of diverse tests. It has shown to be good. We've seen it. We'd like you guys to tell us if it works as well. More importantly, it's worked for companies in different domains, automotive, and also we've worked with surveillance company, and also in different levels of testing. They are diverse, they are general enough that they can capture diversity between system level tests, integration level tests, and unit level tests. That is very important. And if I did a good job in, and I could uh, uh, motivate yourself to question, how diverse is my test suite? If you're questioning that to yourself, then contact, contact us. Just drop by our poster, try to grab us in the hall here, and then we can let you know and show you how. We'll be gladly to help you answer these questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco.